channel need to today i will be starting off with the chapter breathing and exchange of gases that is a chapter from the animal physiology of class 11 portion uh, we will be starting off with this chapter first we are going to end this uh, entire chapter in a condensed manner in a single video we going to have multiple videos of this particular chapter and i'm going to explain you everything every detail that you will be requiring for your you know for appearing in your uh, competitive examinations every points will be cleared so you need not worry and just of course uh, just a reminder uh, we are not having any live uh, sessions here so if you miss out any point in the middle of the uh, you know video or if you're watching the video if you're, you're missing out of course you can you know stop you can you know rewind it and you can watch it over and over and over again okay and listen until you're cleared with your points so let us begin our chapter uh, of course the name uh, says breathing and exchange of gases breathing as we all know is definitely a mechanical process a mechanical process in where certain parts of our body there is a particular system in our body that assists in this process in this mechanical process so that is a respiratory system particularly when we speak about the human when when you are speaking about the humans we have the respiratory system and the process of breathing is a mechanical process exchange of gases is one of the most important function of the respiratory system exchange of gases now our body is made up of numerous cells of course we are multicellular organisms every cell is performing every cell is performing metabolic reactions or metabolic functions and in the process they are producing waste products the two waste products one of them is nitrogenous waste product and the other one is the gaseous waste product of course nitrogenous waste product we are going to study in detail in the excretory system we are going to study uh, that this particular section in detail in that chapter but right now in this chapter breathing and exchange of gases we are concentrating on the gaseous part yes the gaseous waste that is generated in our body due to various metabolic processes is carbon dioxide and we are multicellular organism surviving on aerobic respiration so we need oxygen so we have the environment so this constantly exchange of gases between our body and the environment and who helps in that which system of course the respiratory system now uh, before we go into the detailed anatomy of the human respiratory system study the mechanism of exchange of gases and all other features we have to make a concept clear and let us understand not um, let us understand about other animals how they carry out the process of breathing and respiration or how they carry out the actual process of exchange of gases now how do they have any respiratory system or what is that let us study few animals and try to understand uh, this particular function in them let us now see uh, how exchange of gases is performed in other animal phyla and other other organisms let us start with a microorganism a prokaryotic microorganism let us start with bacteria we all know bacteria is a prokaryotic microorganism yes of course unicellular prokaryotic now they do not have a respiratory system okay so let us see what is that structure in bacteria that helps in this process so we have the cell wall we have the cell wall here below the cell wall below the cell wall in the bacteria there is a plasma membrane however the plasma membrane in bacteria is thrown into a folded structure this folded structure here is called as the mesosome the mesosome is that part of the plasma membrane in bacteria which helps the bacteria which helps the bacteria in the process of respiration so since the mesosome is involved in the process of respiration 
okay so definitely the mesosome will have the enzymes required for the process of respiration that is a small prokaryotic organism let us come to other organisms let us see a little higher up we will see the amoeba amoeba another unicellular eukaryotic organism we have to remember here amoeba amoeba they lack a cell wall so they just have a thin pellicle around them okay they are eukaryotes so they have the nucleus they have the contractile vacuole and definitely the absence of the cell wall okay absence of the cell wall contributes to the formation of the pseudopodia that is that means the amoeba is constantly changing its shape amoeba amoeba carries out the exchange of gases through the general body surface through the general body surface general body surface and not only amoeba we have the poriferans okay also carrying out in, the, in sort of a general body surface but what is the main mechanism of the exchange of gases here in amoeba in the poriferans the main mechanism of exchange of gases is to the process of simple diffusion simple diffusion yes simple diffusion simple diffusion now simple diffusion is not only the only method of uh, exchange of gases only in amoeba and uh, amoeba and the poriferans but we also have the cylindrates also taking up into the same pathway that is they carry out their exchange of gases through the process of simple diffusion i am stressing on the word simple diffusion why because this can come as an mcq simple diffusion it has also been mentioned in the ncert very clearly crisp clearly mentioned in the ncert simple diffusion now apart from this we also have certain other animals which carry out the process of respiration or exchange of gases by the help of certain other structures okay so let us see one of the example let us see now when we talk about uh, a little higher up we have to understand that we are talking about of course invertebrates and then we will go into the vertebrates let us now see uh, uh, let us now explore some other phyla and try to understand the mechanism of exchange of gases or rather say the there is a simple principle behind the exchange of gases and how, which organ or which structure helps in that uh, in that particular process okay so let us come to earthworm if we talk about earthworm if we talk about earthworm yes earthworm we carry out respiration through the moist skin we carry out respiration through the moist skin the skin has to be moist the earthworm has got mucus around their skin which uh, the mucus keeps the skin moist and with the help of which the the moist skin is able to carry out the process of respiration now whenever moist skin carries out any respiratory function it is called as cutaneous respiration cutaneous respiration cutaneous respiration pertains to the respiration that is carried out through the skin okay so we'll see about cutaneous respiration or since we are talking about cutaneous cutaneous respiration also we have to uh, we are talking about earthworm so uh let us go a little bit higher up okay little little bit higher up if we go uh, we will we will get up at, uh, we will get few few uh, other animals we will see some of the invertebrates okay we'll see them clearly and try to understand more clearly their structures i'll be stressing on the important points higher up the earthworm we have the arthropoda or let us be very specific the insects now what what is the function what does what does the insects how do they carry out the process of respiration 
Let us try to understand the process of respiration or exchange of gases in the insects. That is in the phylum Arthropoda. We have seen the earthworm that is they carry out cutaneous respiration through the moist skin. Now let us see the insects. Now insects are cutaneous exoskeleton. All right, and they do not have a specific like sort of a, as they have a uh, they have a complete digestive system. Here they do not have a specific respiratory system. Rather, the respiratory system contains or is made up of tube-like structures made up of various tube-like structures. In this way, they are made up of various tube-like structures which are called as tracheal tubes. They are called as tracheal tubes. So these tube-like structure are called as tracheal tubes. Okay. So tracheal tubes. Now what are these tracheal tubes? The tracheal tubes are the tubes that connect the insect to from the I mean with the external environment and that with the internal environment. The tracheal tubes. Okay. The tracheal tubes have certain pores through which they directly connect to the outside environment for the exchange of gases. These pores are called as spiracles. They are called as spiracles. The tracheal tube. The tracheal tube connects the outside environment to the inside environment. That is why that, that means that the tracheal tubes are in complete connection with the coelom that is the body cavity okay coelom or the body cavity now we are going we will study this in detail but in structural organization we are not going to study in uh, you know very apt detail and going to go into very depth we are just going to study the respiratory structure and its important points from the point of view of this particular chapter that is breathing and exchange of gases Tracheal tubes. Tracheal tubes will help in the exchange of gases. Now, the insects, let us take example of cockroach having 10 abdominal segments. So, every abdominal segment will have a pair of spiracles. Now, this spiracles, each of the spiracles will open into the body cavity or the coelom through tube-like structures called as the tracheal tubes. Now, you will get a question here. This is one of the neat question. What is the similarity between the trachea of the mammals and that of the insects? The answer is both of them are, have, both of them have non-collapsible walls or both of them are non-collapsible. Just like our trachea is non-collapsible, you know, if this is the trachea, it is surrounded by ring of cartilage, C-shaped a cartilage, okay, rings of cartilage, C-shaped rings of cartilage. In the same way, here the tracheal tubes are also surrounded by some kind of cartilage. However, the cartilage is not similar to the one that is found in the mammals. These are simple cartilages, invertebrate cartilages. Okay, so because of this presence, the trachea becomes non-collapsible, similar to that of mammals. So we did one of our MCQ here, right? Yes, got it? Yes, copy. Okay. Now, very importantly, the pattern of respiration. 10 abdominal segments. So, each segment having a pair of spiracles. So, at a time when there is exchange of gases, maybe the upper five uh, pair of spiracles are open and will carry out exchange of gases. And when they are carrying out exchange of gases, the lower five pairs are closed. Again, on the next our cycle, the lower pay, uh, lower five pairs open and carry out exchange of gases and then the upper five pairs are again closed. Okay, so this is a type of, uh, type of pattern of respiration or exchange of gases in the insects. Let us see now uh, the, uh, the respiratory structure in a little bit higher up that is in the molasses. Molasses. The molas carry out their process of respiration through gills. Now their gills are called as tinnidium. Their gills are called as tinnidium. Okay. We have seen the molascans. We have seen all the invertebrates. We have seen most, most of the invertebrates and the respiratory structures associated with them. Okay. Now. Again, I'm trying to, I, I'll, I'll repeat this. I'm trying to put this into your brain. 
वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यू ये सिंपल डिफ्यूजन अमीबा टीनोफोर प्लेटफॉर्म सिंपल डिफ्यूजन प्लीज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओके देन अर्थ वॉ मॉय स्किन क्यूटेनियस रेस्पिरेशन देन वी हैव मुलास्कन यस गिल्स टीनीडियम ऑफकोर्स द इंसेक्ट अनादर इंपॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यू ट्रेक्यूअल ट्यूब्स ओके सो नाउ लेट एस गो little bit higher up in the animal phyla let us now study the invertebrate respiratory structures invertebrate respiratory structure uh, sorry sorry the vertebrate respiratory structures we have studied the invertebrate we are going into the vertebrate respiratory structures a very important thing we have the gills in the fishes okay gills in the fishes the gills are highly vascularized structures vascularized meaning they are richly supplied with blood vessels and the gills help in the exchange of gas here this exchange of gases gills very important we'll see the functions of gills also in the later chapters again coming a little bit higher up of course now we are going to study very very important let us concentrate on the frogs yes class amphibia frogs frogs have a very respiratory structures now they carry out respiration through the moist skin when the respiration is through moist skin it is called as cutaneous respiration cutaneous respiration when the respiration is uh through the buccal cavity buccal cavity it is called as the buccopharyngeal pharyngeal respiration and out of this most important we have the lungs which is called as the pulmonary respiration now when we are talking about moist skin of course we have studied moist skin in earthworm also the skin has to be moist buccal cavity also carries our respiration okay in the frogs and the amphibians and most importantly is the lungs the lungs are the most important respiratory structures which are found in the higher chordates or you can say higher vertebrates higher animals let us put it in the simple form higher animals okay so lungs very important so lungs in human beings also we have a very important organ called as the lungs the lungs form an important part of the respiratory system the lungs along with the other structures that is the nasal uh, nasal pores the nasal cavities nasal chambers we have the trachea bronchi all the structures together with the lungs make up the respiratory system all right so we are going to end this video here in the next video upcoming video i am going to go into the detail of the human respiratory system we are going to start with the anatomy of the human respiratory system thank you for watching